Hey everybody, it's Charlie with the Gladys Porter Zoo with my buddy Walter. Walter is our mammal curator, so that means he's in charge of the whole mammal collection. So he has a huge job. He has one of the largest uh, staff here at the zoo because of course we have a lot of animals that he needs to maintain. And really, um, he helps us a lot with uh, educating us in the marketing department that we really don't know so much about some of the exhibits and what's, go what's going on. And um, I bet you can't guess exactly what exhibit we're in, but we'll give you a little peek. We're gonna pan the camera over, and you're gonna see our little friends, not our little friends, our big friends kind of peeking out and um, kind of seeing what we're doing because they don't normally uh, have the marketing department up here in, in their exhibit. But we're actually behind the scenes um, of the giraffe exhibit. And um, actually, it's a place that I've never been before. And, um, and I get to figure out, and Walter explains a lot of different things that, that go on that we necessarily don't know about, especially our visitors who really don't get to get, be in this area. You know, it's a special treat, especially for us. And one of the questions that we always get, especially during the summer, is um, what do the animals do during the heat? So, um, and with that, you know, a lot of animals live in high heat areas, like the giraffe and live in Africa. Um, and then the other question is like, oh, do they have enough water? Because sometimes we'll do maintenance in our um, front part of the exhibit, which is more just for just for looks. Um, but we always have uh, different water sources, and most of them were built um, kind of like a, a hidden, so that way you really don't see them and they don't really disrupt the, the the exhibit. But Walter can tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing right back here. So, uh, so what do we have over here in, uh, in this, uh, this water station, I guess, for the giraffe? That's exactly what it is. As you know, during this time of year especially, but even during the winter, hydration is very important, not only for you and I, but also for all the animals that we have. But we don't always like to have something on display where our guests can see it. Okay. We would rather go ahead and have it off the site. But that does lead to the question, where is your water for the animals? So we try, even though we hide it, we do have water here. It's a very big part of what we do, just like feeding is. Uh, for all our animals here. So this is actually, when you're looking from the public side this way, this is actually behind the rock work that we have here. And this is a freshwater uh, site that we have, a little pool, that we clean on a daily basis, dump and fill, and the giraffe always have clean water. And you can see that we recirculate the water, excuse me, we fill the, the water every day. So it's always clean, it's always cool. And it's always moving, so like, that's why right, it's always cool. Always and we want to get a little shot about the, the little uh, canopy that we have over there with the giraffe. You kind of get a scale of exactly where we're at in the exhibit. So when you're looking from the public area, you can actually uh, uh, see their, their uh, their little palapa, I guess, over there, and you'll see this rock formation with this tr a tree standing out, and the water sources behind that. And it's a very important. And uh, Walter brought up an interesting topic about being staying hydrated for us and the animals. And you always have to remember when, especially if you come here right in the the uh, hottest part of the day in the afternoon, that you do need to stay hydrated, just like the animals. And the animals. Um, all have different uh, stations that we use to ensure their safety. Yeah, one more thing. People are also going to look at this, they're going to see how low it is, they're going to uh -huh. go, how can the giraffe get to this? Well, if you ever look on any of the, uh, any of the specials, giraffe will actually splay their legs out and they bend uh, down yeah. and they dip their neck and they get water that way. So even though it looks low to the ground, the giraffe can use this quite easily and that would be a natural thing. And you know, that's something I really didn't think about also. But no, it's a good, it's a good point and, and a lot of time we don't know exactly about all the animals and what they can do and what they and you would think about it yeah in their wild natural environment they don't have high up uh, waterfalls or drain or little water sources yeah. but let's continue on to our next exhibit and uh, we'll see you a little bit So we're uh, back here at the Cape Hunting Dog Exhibit, not the hyena. A lot of people always uh, think they're hyenas, but no, they're called Cape Hunting Dogs or painted, wild painted dogs, right? Correct, yeah. Painted dogs. Yeah. Pa dog. African painted dogs, there you go. And uh, see, we're always learning here with Walter. And um, uh, so this is, of course, actually, I've never been inside the Cape Hunting Dog Exhibit, and it's kind of intimidating because they were, uh, you know, on a normal day seeing them out, and the keeper's over here barking at us, pretending, scaring us over here. 
but um, uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, look when you're actually inside the exhibit looking out and I mean you're not familiar where the cake hunting dogs are at they're right in front of the zebra exhibit so and right next to the lion exhibit as well so can you tell us a little bit uh, more about uh, what we do and, and the other question that we have here same as giraffes is like where do they get their water source Sure. I mean, the first interesting thing about wild dogs, they're one of the most efficient predators since you brought up health. You know, it's kind of intimidating. They are a very uh, successful hunter when they do it. So we do worry about that every yeah, time. Well, we're thanks, out Walter. Yeah, that so, makes me feel much better. <laughs> it's so soon, yeah. But, yeah, but going back to the water part, what we have is uh, we have the outside water source that you can see. This is a little bit different. It's still a bowl. The dogs can still get to it quite easily. But from the, when you're outside and you're looking in, sometimes it's a deep bowl, so you can't always see how much water is in there. Now, in the afternoon, people, as you can see, this water doesn't run like the draft water did. Mm -hmm. So people do worry about it getting hot. But what we do to counteract that, again, because we realize how important water is, especially in the heat, we do open up one of their doors to the inside. The dogs can actually go in there and, and get water when they want to, and also cool down. They don't utilize it a lot, yeah. but we do give them that option. Yeah, they have like an, an option, just like um, a lot of our other primates, they have an option to kind of go inside the exhibit. And if you don't notice, I'll stick my hand into the water bowl so you kind of see how, and it's not even fully uh, filled up yet, so there, and of course we'll, after my hand's in there, we'll refill it. But, um, and it kind of surprised me, I thought this was with the area where the, the hunting dogs came in, but then I was kind of walking on the exhibit because I'd never been in here, and they're actually all right there staring at us, so it's kind of, uh, and that's the area you said that they usually open, so they can go in and, and out. And, um, and um, of course, like I said, being a little nervous being in here and then seeing them right there next to you. Uh, it's cool, it's cool. It's, it's always a fun part of here at the zoo. Um, we do have another exhibit that we want to visit and um, we'll see you over there a little bit shortly. Uh, we're back here in the Western Gray Kangaroo exhibit and um, you know Mr. Aguina from our famous bat uh, exhibit and some of the kangaroos here are making a little bit of funny noises and, and I guess they're not used to us being in here but this is just another um, a question we get a lot of, of, uh, of with, the, with these kangaroos about why they are in this room and not outside in their bigger exhibit so can you Mr. Aguina can you explain to us a little bit of, of why that is? Uh, the reason is because they used to, we used to have to, the kangaroos outside. And what, what happens is that over there in Australia, it is hot, but it's a dry heat. And here in South Texas, it's, a, it's hot, but it's also humid, and they cannot take the humidity. So that's why they designed this building, and they built this building especially for them, for the, for the kangaroos, so they can, uh, so they can uh, not uh, get sick or, you know, because they actually overheat, and they, they actually get, like, they get strokes and also they, they, they don't survive. So here they have thrived and they have had the success of reading them, you know, because they, they when this gets too hot, we'll put them inside and, and they can survive. That's what they just, this display was made for. Yeah, and, and it's also, you know, interesting because, you know, a lot of those points that we don't always know about, and um, this is actually their door to their outside exhibit, and, and um, sometimes you have to make them go outside because right. they, cause they right. really, of course, they like us, they like the air conditioning. But it's just a good reminder, you know, just like the kangaroo, that we do need to keep in mind with the, the heat and the humidity uh, um, here in South Texas. That way, uh, we just always got to make sure we stay hydrated. And um, Ariana with the camera, she's over there uh, with the kangaroos feeding everybody and they're having a good time. And when you come visit the exhibit, you'll notice we'll have a couple joeys, maybe some more that I can't see right now. And um, uh, of course, who doesn't love uh, kangaroos? So um, thanks again, and we'll keep you updated with more information throughout the Gladys Porter Zoo. Of course, you can always like us on Facebook, uh, give them some more contact information at gpz.org. Um, thanks again. Bye-bye. We'll see you later.